Welcome to the latest episode of Five on the Floor and the Five Reasons Sports Network. Thanks for joining us on your favorite podcast app on Apple, Apple Podcasts, on Android, Spotify, and the Five Reasons YouTube channel. Also, check out Off the Floor. That's our Discord server, $2.99 per month. Link right here in the description. What do you get there that you don't get on Twitter? Well, for example, we did a stage show over the weekend. Myself, Alex, and Greg took questions for 45 minutes. Interact with us there. Interact with Heat fans all day long. Also, you get updates on the heat before you get them anywhere else. And you don't have to deal with political season on Twitter right now. $2.99 per month. Link right here in the description. Also, check out the great sponsors of the Five Reasons Sports Network. This is one you may need to reach out to. We know that flooding is coming to South Florida again this week because of Hurricane Milton. Water cleanup of Florida. Currently, they're helping people all over the state, but they can help you too. Based in Boca Raton, service the entire Tri-County area and beyond. If you didn't get the preventative maintenance, uh, that's okay. They can still help you when you got a leak. Or if you've got damage, they can help you with the assessment. They've got you covered every step of the way. It's Water Cleanup of Florida. More than 100 five-star reviews on Google. Michael Robert and his team, Big Heat fans, they'll take care of you in South Florida, again, or anywhere else. So check them out. Water Cleanup of Florida, WCUFL.com. If you got the schmutz, they got the guts. And now, today's episode. Down to Biscay. Yeah, uh, five on the floor, ride for my dogs. Where here's the thing, you can check the score. Hustle hard, couple scars, wearing bubble frogs. Just like Buckley said, you in trouble, y'all. Kept the floor plan, got an all band. Y'all seen the block, stop with one hand. And Pat, we trust, it's power, have the guts. We here to bring the heat, y'all can hang it up. Welcome to Five on the Floor, a daily insider show on the Miami Heat and the NBA featuring Ethan Skolnick, Greg Sylvander, and Alex Toledo, plus others from the Five Reasons Sports Network. Welcome back to Five on the Floor. Here's today's floor plan. I'm Ethan Skolnick. You can follow me at Ethan J. Skolnick and at Five Reasons Sports. I got Brady Hawk. You can follow me at Brady Hawk 305. This is the time where I tell you, make sure that you go back in our library because I kind of feel like Heat fans are just checking in. Just checking in after a long off season, just getting through training cramp camp scrimmages today. That's what we're going to talk about or tonight. We believe as of right now, it has not been canceled. Um, we get into that too. Uh, but we've got tons of content on the feed. Uh, we did interviews, I think with 14 different heat players. Um, some of them were done with myself, Brady, and Alex at Media Day, and some of them I did myself at training camp. And so, for instance, there's one episode, which is just a conglomeration of short interviews. I had uh, Spolcher for a few minutes on the side. I talked to him about the Olympics and what he took from some of the great players he worked with there. I thought his answers, uh, you know, particularly on on, uh, on LeBron were interesting. So check those out and also kind of the way that other players reacted to Bam there, what he can take back. From the Olympics, also got a chance to talk to – well, I want to ask you about that, Brady, because I talked to Tyler about his shooting form changes, and you you picked this up just from seeing a couple of clips that the Heat had sent out from their social media that essentially his base uh, was a little bit different, uh, a little tighter, trying to get uh, the release a little quicker, and he acknowledged all of that. Uh, how do you think that that translates? Well, he's always been somebody that has like a really wide base on his shots. And it's not like he's somebody that need to needed to like we weren't talking about him having to make adjustments. Like he came off a, a 40, he's shooting over 40% catch and shoot. Uh, feels like every year. So you're talking about tightening his base just means he's getting it off quicker where he's kind of already set. Like he doesn't have to get into that one two step before he shoots. He just kind of preset. And it was like, I was just curious to see if that was something he worked on or if it was like seeing two clips in a random training camp video if that was like okay that was just the scenario the way he got the shot off but it makes sense because it's like it, it puts you in a position that no matter which way you catch it no matter how, he, he puts himself in a position where like he can always just immediately fire uh mm -hmm. and that's kind of what always like kind of what are the all the best shooters have done it's like and you doesn't matter where you catch you can get a shot off and you don't have to he doesn't have to get set at all times so just hearing that that he, that he kind of is tightening that in that way and getting things off quicker tells you Kind of leads to the fact that the stuff we heard on Media Day, where, where Tyler and Spo were talking about him drilling all offseason spot up stuff because he's willing to kind of play more of an, an off ball role with this team and with the starting lineup. Um, so I'm interested to see it. I'm interested to see it because I, I wonder if there's going to be a little bit of an adjustment period because his, his shot is already so pure that I, I don't think this is going to be something that throws it off at all, but I just think it's something that helps get his shots off quicker. So I'm, I'm interested to see when he, when he kind of plays that spot up role. 
Yeah, and a couple of other things that, that came out of camp and some of those conversations. Um, uh, first thing, people were worried about health with Rozier and Robinson. I, I don't expect there to be any setbacks there based on how they got through camp. Uh, I watched Josh Richardson work, and it looks like he's close. I know he told us that it's there's been some setbacks as – you know, he's kind of pushed forward and then he has a bad day. But, I mean, he was doing quite a bit. I mean, the, the, not not just the shooting drills, but also the ball handling drills. They're, he did them with force. Um, you know, they're going to be careful with this. They have other players available in the, at the, that rotation spot or that kind of pseudo rotation spot that he's occupying right now. So uh, we'll talk about some of those. But I don't expect uh, it to be a long period of time for him. And then Drew Smith coming back from the knee. But we've seen him competing with the guys. So... Um, he, again, is trying to keep that two-way spot. Let, let's start with this, sort of how the scrimmage works, if it happens. And the, if it happens is important here because the Panthers canceled their own uh, special event tonight, which was also going to charity, just like uh, tonight's event goes to charity for the Heat, which was they canceled the ring uh, ceremony, which I know a lot of people were, were looking forward to, and they're not rescheduling it. They're, the Panthers are just going to give the, the players the rings uh, privately, which is kind of disappointing i think if you're a panther fan i, I kind of wish they had just moved it to doing it right right before the uh you know the opening game and but we don't even know if they're going to play their opening game that hasn't been canceled yet but that's on tuesday at home now the heat have not canceled the red white and pink scrimmage even though there is expected uh to be some flooding in south florida over the next couple of days uh as milton uh, gets ready to cross the state uh, but as of right now, it is on. So if you're listening to this beforehand, it's six dollars. Excuse me, seven dollars, I believe. I, I, I believe, and it's uh, six o'clock. Uh, I think they're opening the doors at five. So anyway, uh, if you're planning on going, it still is on right now. And so we'll get into kind of what we're expecting to see. Um, first thing, Brady, he tends to throw out, and it's not. It, it, it's a plan. It's a coaching staff plan. Spolster is not going to coach either of the two teams. He'll have two of his assistants coach. Um, you know, it may, might be Wayne. It might be Coach Dan. It might be Karan. We're not exactly sure who the two coaches will be. But he'll have two coaches uh, coaching, and they won't have the same team the whole time. That's the one thing to understand, too. The, the teams are switched up. But they will tend to throw out the assumed starting lineup. So I guess, do you expect to see – since all these players have been declared healthy to this point, we haven't heard anybody's not playing. Do you expect to see Bam, Jovic, Butler, Hero, Rozier? 100%. I mean, I've said it the other day, but like I, I'm not used to seeing, I guess, Heat social media put out stuff like so clearly. And all training camp, it was that lineup. Like They were pretty clear that they were drilling that lineup all camp because – Usually it's about finding certain combinations and it's like trying to find things that work. But with this team, it's not that like this team, it's about putting your best players on the floor together and figuring it out. And it feels like they did that a good portion of training camp. And that's kind of the most important thing. Like, let's also note, like th this scrimmage is also like not extremely serious. Like th there's certain things like last year, Jimmy was like shooting lefty the entire time. So like there's certain things here that it is just about, uh, I guess showcasing certain things and just kind of putting it out there, like, like a, a lighter version of what the scrimmages look like in camp. Uh, but I do expect to see that lineup. And I think the second unit is probably more interesting than the starting lineup. And I don't think we would have said that a few weeks ago. Like we were all talking about the starting lineup. I think a lot of people are curious to see who the next five are. Like there, there's some guarantees. Obviously Duncan, Jaime and Haywood are probably the definite guarantees. The next question, I think love is probably definitely going to be that five man for that second unit. But I think a lot of people are intrigued to see that. And then the real intrigue is who's going to be the fifth guy. Because in training, I mean, some of those videos, you're seeing Drew Smith with that lineup that, that's been running a lot. And he had, a, I think, a tip-in game winner um, on the last day of camp. But I'm curious, to, a guy I'm interested to see probably a little bit more is Alec Burks. I just want to see how he fits in. I want to see kind of the role he, he plays with that second unit, if he is a little bit more on ball with that specific unit, or if it's Jaime on ball and he's going to play his role off ball. Like Alec Burks is somebody I'm interested just to see how he slots, slots in with that group. Um, but yeah, I, I think the starting lineup is pretty guaranteed. They're probably just going to go through the motions a little bit. It'll probably be a lot of Terry and Tyler, uh, just kind of going back and forth on ball and Bam will probably put up a bunch of threes and get people excited. Uh, but I'm interested to see the second unit. Well, see, and, and, and I think the second unit, one of the things is that we, we may not see someone like Kevin Love tonight. Like I felt like last year at the scrimmage, we didn't 
So he he will tend to rest uh, some of the some of the older players. Just give them a break tonight. So we don't know for sure, um, but it may not look exactly like it's going to look during the season. But he will rotate different combinations. And I think one thing we'll probably see is this starting lineup. You know, which I expect to see the same as you. But then I also think we could see some lineups with maybe Highsmith in there with that group, maybe Hawk is in there with that group, maybe Duncan in there with Terry. Um, some of the layers of the rotations that they're going to get to. I also think that we'll see it be a little bit more serious today, at least from Jimmy Butler, than it was last year. Remember that? Um, yeah, I agree. He, what, what did he? I'm trying to remember. There was the there was the left-handed three-point shot. Is that right? Yeah, he, he he played lefty the entire game. Like, right. I don't right. think he shot one right-handed shot. Right. So I I would anticipate. I, I don't I don't want this to be like the no fun league with Jimmy. I don't think they do either. But I also think and. Again, we made a little bit too much of the hair thing because he was planning on doing something with the hair if he had just gotten to gotten to America on time that day. But um, I, I do anticipate he'll take it a little bit more seriously than he took it last year because I think there's an overall tone that's trying to trying to be set here. As we go through some of the younger players, though, that they that will get layered in more and probably play more in the second half. Uh, we spoke to the the most recent podcast that's on the feed is Pella Larson along with. Uh, Kashad Johnson, and then we spoke to Little too. What can let, let's talk about Little first and Christopher in particular? Because I kind of grouping them together because they're the former first round picks. I know they don't have the same status with the team. One has a two way contract, the other has a, a a a contract that is only like there till January seventh, and then the Heat would have to guarantee it. So it is a full contract, but it's it's non guaranteed in that regard. Um, what can those two guys show in a game like this? Because I almost feel like if if Christopher shows like they both have this upside because they were former first round picks, but they're both being expected to fill very specific roles with this team that don't really include some of the skill sets that they brought into into this level, at least at this point. But this is going to be an open, kind of free flowing. Some guys, you know, not goofing off, but it's not going to be the the tightest defense you've ever seen. So what can they show exactly? Because I almost don't feel like if Josh Christopher has a bunch of dunks, we're okay, but is he going to have that role during, you know, if he ever got a chance to play for this team? So this format, to your point, fits Josh Christopher way more it does than like an Asir Little. Like an Asir Little is somebody I kind of see having to like step into even a preseason game just so he could kind of showcase like full court, like <laughs> guarding full court, doing all this stuff defensively or playing off ball or, or cutting and all that stuff. This really isn't the format for that. Josh Christopher is like a high level shot creator. So like, I, I really do believe this is probably his environment. Like it's somewhere to show out now to your point. Will it be the role he's playing in a lot of games for Miami? Probably not. I, because I think in a lot of games, if he's slotting in, it's going to be more of the defensive stuff and just being more of an athletic guy, kind of in a role of like Caleb was uh, in certain lineups. But in this environment, he's probably going to be getting a lot of like tough shots up that he was in summer league. And I think that's kind of, what a lot of people still want to see. I mean, Pella Larson, somebody like that, that does, is not like a flashy player like Josh Christopher. So he's not somebody that's going to like take over the scrimmage. He's somebody that's also like a do the dirty work kind of player that he's going to kind of do the little things offensively. I want to see him kind of get more shots up. Uh, I think a lot of people just want to see him being willing to constantly shoot the three ball because that's ultimately what they're going to have to use him for. Keisha Johnson, Flashy player, but kind of like Nasir Little, most of his impact is going to be done like on the defensive end and doing the little things. This also doesn't really like uh, fit his style. But look, Miami likes having guys that like don't fit a stupid scrimmage play style, right? Like they, they want guys that are like built to like go and play in like regular season games uh, and you know go after it defensively, do all this stuff. So like it's not the worst thing in the world to have those type of players. But yeah. Kalel Ware, I think the interesting thing with him, like going through the young guys, is first of all, 100% we're going to see him with Bam. I think they're 100% going to show that because they did it with Omer. They did, they've done it with past. I, I can't think of the last one. They've done it. I think they put him out there with Thomas Bryant last year. So like they, they, they'll go the big thing. I think in this scrimmage, you'll see kind of a, you know, hints of it. They've done it in training camp. So that'll be the interesting one. I think probably that's kind of the most intriguing thing I think of this, this whole entire scrimmage is trying to see those two together, how they kind of bounce off each other. And specifically if they are playing together, like where Bam is positioned, because that's ultimately how this thing's going to work. Like, where is he going to be playing on the floor when where is on the floor? Uh, 
so that's one of the few things I'll say that you like legitimately can be evaluated because a lot of this stuff, like like you're saying, like a, we're not making like firm evaluations of an Asir Little off this scrimmage. But I, I think you do want to see kind of what a shot looks like and stuff like that. So it's just kind of minor things, I guess. Yeah, and also kind of want to see, and we'll, we'll talk about this on the other side, uh, how um, a couple of the young point guards handle kind of organizing in this chaos, which, again, this scrimmage is to a certain degree chaos, and then we'll get to a little less chaos as we go to the preseason games, uh, which and, and you and I were talking about this uh, before air. I'm not exactly sure the preseason games are going to happen this week uh, because – They've got to travel, and then they got to come back. And by the time they come back, there may be flooding in Miami. We'll see. And so, uh, you know, t- take the basketball where you can get it this week because, obviously, uh, there's other concerns that are going on in this area. And speaking of that, actually, uh, our friends over at uh, at Ubreak will fix. Um, so one of the things that can happen here on the roads of South Florida Particularly as they get flooded, they're not so great in the first place, they can get damaged. So reach out to our friends over at You Break Wheel Fix. That's with a U at the start, Mark and his team. You mentioned five reasons. You get 5.5% off your next order. Based in North Miami, been there for quite a long time. They've actually expanded, moved because so many people uh, use their services. It's not just the fixing of the wheels, but they also do the refinishing, the polishing, uh, all that kind of stuff. They got all the custom uh, colors for powder coating, etc., so check them out at You Break Wheel Fix. Again, that's You Break with a U at the start. You Break Wheel Fix on Instagram and You Break Wheel Fix.com. Again, mention five reasons. Get 5.5% off your next order. Also, as we always mention, prize picks, use that code five. Uh, got a Monday night game tonight. So check in there. You can use that. Pretty soon you can play the NBA as well. All right. So the point guards. Um, I don't know if our, I don't know if we're gonna see Drew tonight or not, honestly. Uh, but we have seen him. I mean, I know that they, there was this question of whether or not he was going to get a lot of work during camp. And we have seen, not only have we seen Drew Smith in the highlights, they have legitimately, I think they're trolling Heat fans. Uh, I know they're trolling Heat fans. By the way, they, 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 the folks, I, I know the folks who run their their social media, and they they are plugged into what's going on on social media. And I, so let, let, let's talk about Drew Smith specifically here. Because, you know, it, it's become this thing where he's become this sort of weird scapegoat for the heat not making major moves and part of it is they literally announced the his retention on this you know the two-way contract on the exact same day that uh what something else had fallen through or somebody else had gone somewhere else was it mitchell staying in cleveland i can't remember the specifics of it yeah i think it might have been that or or was it like the first day of free agency it was something along those lines Right. It was something along those lines. So, you know, it's, oh, this is our big signing. Okay. And and look, we've talked about Drew before and what, why he's here, which is Eric Spolstra likes the way he runs the offense, finds him to be dependable, and he defends. And these are all qualities that he fans, I think, would have appreciated in a past day. For instance, like I, I mentioned Anthony Carter with, in my interview with Isaiah Stevens, but really it's kind of why Drew, it's kind of why AC stuck around back in the late 90s was because he did the things Pat wanted him to do in that regard that Spo likes that Drew does. And then, of course, Drew had the unfortunate situation where he got hurt in Cleveland because that floor has always been a mess. I covered the Cavs for a year up there and uh, saw lots of guys try to avoid getting hurt. He couldn't. He gets hurt. So I said at the time, he'll be back. Like, first thing, I think they felt badly about the way the whole thing played out, but also Spo likes him. As long as he worked to get his way back, he was going to have a chance to be back. Now, he has a two-way but also they've got Zion Paul and they've got uh, Isaiah Stevens, both of whom were with them in Summer League. And I, I know Stevens is more of the favorite of the fan base, and I think of, of ours. What can they? What can these three guys actually show in a game like this, or scrimmage like this? Yeah, it definitely is a little bit tougher, but I think they're they're going to give them responsibility, specifically kind of later in the scrimmage. They'll probably both be running a unit, and it's just kind of like put your team in position in the half court to kind of run certain stuff. Like they want to put the kind of the, the burden on them to just run stuff defensively. It's a little, like we said, it's a little bit tougher in this environment to like really get after it defensively. Uh, but I'll say like, I really do believe, and I know people may get mad at this, but like, I do believe that Drew Smith plays like rotation minutes uh, certain nights. Like that, that we're talking about the fact that they don't have a backup point guard. And like, I understand why like <laughs> things get looked at at Drew Smith specifically. But if you were to like describe his skill set and give it to another player that they picked up like off their summer league team, people would probably like him. 
<laughs> like people would be like, okay, we could probably use that as a backup point guard. Like he, 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 like you said, he defends at a high level. He doesn't turn the ball over. He could set things up offensively. Like the one thing they're missing on that second unit right now, if we're talking about this like current roster, is that second unit does not have a ball handler to get things in position. Like it's going to be a lot of Alec Burks or Josh Richardson uh, or Jaime Hawkins or like one of these guys setting up your half court offense if you're not staggering. So like at certain points, I don't think he's the worst player to fit into certain lineups there and put things in a position. It really just comes down to like, First of all, he's bigger than Isaiah Stevens, which I think gives him the upper hand there. I just like Isaiah Stevens' game in general because I, I just think he's like an incredible passer. Uh, and there's probably a little more upside there, but I just think they always lean with the higher floor. And that's kind of what Drew Smith is. They know what he is. They know what you're going to get when you get out there, which is why I think you're going to probably see a little bit more Poland and Stevens in the scrimmage because they want to see what they have there as for they know what they have with Drew Smith. But I just think when it comes down to like certain games, like I, I think he's going to play certain games and I think he could play well we'll see what the shooting looks like that's always going to be the swing ability but the other stuff has been there the other stuff he's not going to make a lot of mistakes and even though I feel like a lot of people when they watch him because there's like this this thing against him like if he does one little thing wrong it's like it gets blasted but uh he doesn't make a lot of mistakes so like I think there's certain ability there for him to play a little bit of you know this is a chance to prove himself like this is his one last time because if if he does play a season here where it's kind of up and down, they're probably going to replace those two ways because they have a lot of guys looking in that, that are pretty talented. Well, he is like kind of a new archetype for Heat fan target, right? Because you, you mentioned it. He's not a guy who makes a lot of mistakes. Typically, it's a guy who makes a lot of mistakes that the Heat fans go after. But Drew has become this lightning rod, I think, for things beyond his control. Like, I, I, and I'm I'm not saying I see the highest upside there. I don't. We've talked about it. But if you're talking about like a baseline point guard who just gets you into offense and defends, okay, he fits those qualifications. And if the rest of your lineup is functional, okay, then he's fine. Like I'm saying, like. It, like he should not be the guy you're noticing in a lineup with Jimmy Butler, Bam Adebayo, and and uh, and potentially Tyler Hero, right? Like you, you shouldn't. Like it's really on them. It's just on him to kind of run the sets, get an offense, and and pick up. And I'll say this, and I I know that people think I had a thing against Lowry at the end, but I, what exactly was Kyle doing? Like I, right? What, what what was Kyle doing at the end with Miami that would be so much greater than what Drew Smith could provide now? I mean, Kyle wouldn't shoot. I mean, the, the whole thing was like Drew's, you know, Drew has been consistent as a shooter. I mean, Kyle, you know, was likely going to the Hall of Fame, uh, had opportunities to shoot, would not shoot. I mean, he just did that thing where he would kind of dribble halfway into the paint and turn around and start spinning around and then pointing. Like, I, I don't, I don't, Drew can do that. But anyway, that seems like a good place to end this episode. We're hoping, we're hoping again that there will be a scrimmage. Uh, we're hoping we helped you watch uh, in in some way. But I, I do expect the majority of the players to play tonight, even if the, the core guys may not play that much. Um, and then when the preseason starts, we'll get to that. You know, I, I think that Spolstra is going to uh, use the starting lineup more than he has in the past for exactly what you're saying, because I think that he wants to get at the reps. Uh, but he also has a lot of other players to work through. He does. It, it's a, it's an interesting roster uh, past like the number 11 spot, whereas I don't think that it, in some past years it has been. Uh, that's not necessarily a ceiling raiser for this team, but it may be a, a floor in terms of they have some guys who I think can fill in who can do capable jobs, whereas before I don't think they necessarily had that kind of depth on the back end of the roster. Anyway, thanks to Brady. Um, Alex, Greg will be back with us uh, during the week. Also, one thing we want, want I wanted to announce here, we're going to have more NBA content. We're going to be starting a new feed with some non-heat content. Uh, we know that you guys don't really want it on the five on the floor feed, so we're going to be putting it all somewhere else. But we really recommend it because uh, we're going to have a lot of our contributors who are in other cities, and they're going to be providing coverage from other teams, which is going to help layer our coverage of the Heat as the season goes on. Again, thanks to Brady. Thanks to our sponsors. You break, we'll fix. Water cleanup of Florida. Stay safe, everybody.